Hey everyone, welcome to today's Take Heart. You might have noticed that I am not Mike. He normally does Mondays, but I'm so sorry you've got me this Monday. And our plan with Take Heart is to bring it down as of this week to just once a week. Uh, it's still very much our intention to continue to do Take Heart weekly until we're through COVID and, and you know we're on the other side of it. But um, as of this week, we're gonna be going down to just doing it once a week. I don't know how much uh, Christmas shopping you've managed to get done, but I have been um, looking at some of the scriptures about Christmas, as, as you would imagine, partly to avoid doing any Christmas shopping. And in the, uh, in the book of Isaiah, there is a prophecy about Jesus, and it says this, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And then in John chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Um, Christmas, as far as I can uh, see, is the only sort of celebration we have where everybody gives everybody gifts. You know, on birthdays, one person gets all the gifts. On anniversaries, you exchange gifts. But Christmas is this time where we just all give gifts to everybody else. And it's right that we do that because Christmas is the time where we celebrate and remember God's great gift to us. Jesus. He's God's gift to me and he's God's gift to you. And when we think about him as a gift, there's a few things that spring to my mind. The first is that no one expected this gift. My little boy Josiah is five and he's making his Christmas list. And the list basically is exclusively Mario. Anything that's to do with Mario is on there. And the reason for that is because just from Josiah's limited experience of life so far, Mario is the best thing in his world. And he thinks that if he can just get more Mario stuff, then his, his life will get better. And um, Beth and I are going to give him some of that, but we also have a plan to give him a gift that he's not expecting. And um, the hope is that we'll give him a gift, and when he opens it, he realises, ah, this is what I've really needed all along. I didn't know this existed, I didn't know that I wanted it, but now I've got it. I realise that this is not only what I needed, but what I wanted for the whole time. That's what we're shooting for as parents. We're still trying to work out what that's actually going to be. But that's the best response to a gift that you give someone, isn't it? It's, it's when they might say, this was not on my Christmas list, but had I known it existed, it would have been number one on the list. And uh, Jesus, before we came to know him, I expect for most of us, he was not on our Christmas list. If we were to say what we needed from God, we probably, maybe this is just me, but would have said things like more money or a relationship or success in this area. Or maybe the more kind of the more righteous among us would have said, we need you to come and sort out the world. You know, we need you to come in power and sort out all these people who are causing all these problems and resolve all of these issues. We need you to come in strength and in might and do that. I don't think any of us would have said, we need you to come in vulnerability as a tiny little baby. Born on the wrong side of the tracks, grow up in poverty, and to die in weakness and shame and humiliation on a cross. That's what we need you to do, God. This is a gift that none of us knew we needed and none of us expected. And partly, I think, the reason not many of us knew we needed it is because not many of us thought the problem was that we were broken or that we were selfish and sinful. Um, I know for me, I thought I was doing all right before I came to know Jesus. You know, maybe not the nicest guy around, but a lot better than a lot of people. And I thought the problems were out there. And actually the message of Christianity is a hard one to receive and it's a humbling one to say, Yes to, because it shows us that the problem is not just out there, it's very much in here. And the problem is the state of the human heart. You know, one person once said, it's cheesy, but I like it. The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. My problem, your problem, our problem is that we are selfish. 
and that we need to be saved. We can't resolve that ourselves. And God gives us a saviour. He stoops to conquer. He comes in weakness to lift us up. He gives us himself as our saviour. And through Jesus, we, we are made righteous. And he's the gift that none of us knew we needed. But when actually we receive him, um, if I'd known this was what Christianity was about, if I'd known this was the heart of Christmas, it would have been the only thing on my list. He's a gift that's unexpected. Second thing about Jesus as a gift is he is just that. He's a gift freely given to be freely received. And I remember, again, listening to Tim Keller, and he just talks about how Christianity is not a wage religion, it's a gift religion. How every other religion says, you know what, if you behave in this way and you do these things, then God will love you. But uh, Christianity, the message is, he loves you. And because of his love, we end up behaving differently. But it starts with, it begins with, he loves us. And the... Uh, you know, the heart of it is generosity and it's grace and it's the gift of God. One of the things that just makes that point is the fact that God gives himself to us long before we ever gave ourselves to him. Now imagine this, um, picture a person this year who has really hurt you, you know, really annoyed you, really uh, kind of upset you this year. Uh, maybe they went for you at work or at school or whatever it is. Are you planning on giving that person a Christmas present this year? Me neither. Maybe some of us are, maybe one or two of us might. We might think because of, out of a sense of duty or to make them feel bad, but probably most of us are not gonna give that person a Christmas present this year. And uh, can you imagine if you took that person and you said to yourself, look, here's a person who's really gone for me this year in all the long, wrong ways. They've rejected me, they've made me feel small, they've despised me, they, you know, they, they've actively hated me at times. And what I wanna do is then I wanna look around for that which is most precious to me. That which causes me more delight than anything else, that which I adore, and I'm gonna give that to them. Can you imagine doing that? That's what God has done for us. That's what he does for us when he gives us Jesus. When we are a long, long, long way from, from knowing him, from showing any interest in knowing him, he came to us as a gift. And um, because he's given us Jesus, what that says is he, he's given us that which is closest to him. God the Son. It doesn't get more precious than that. You can't top that. He's given us his very best, his very heart. Here's the final thing about thinking of Jesus the gift. Um, you know, when we give people gifts at their best, I know this is all, always true, office secret centers and the like, but at their best, what gifts are is they're telling a person something. They're telling a person that we love them. They're telling them what they're worth to us. And most of us, I know I do, spend a lot of time hustling for our worth, trying to, trying to do things that make us feel like we are worthy, that we are somebody. And we'll do that in different ways, trying to be the person that everybody needs, um, trying to achieve whatever it might be for you. Uh, we all have our own ways of trying to become acceptable, trying to get more followers, trying to get more likes. Um, if I do this, if I am like this, if I live like this, then I'll be worthy, then I'll be loved. Have you ever had a situation where somebody gave you a gift and it was just too much? You know, you didn't really think you had that sort of relationship and then they gave you this really expensive gift. And one of the things they might be saying to us through that is, you're worth more to me than you realise. Well, how about this, this Christmas? How about instead of looking in the mirror to find our sense of worth? How about instead of looking at what other people say uh, about us or the way they treat us? How about instead of looking at our list of achievements of things we've accomplished? How about instead of that, we look at the gift that God has given us? We look at Jesus, we look under the Christmas tree, as it were, and we see him. Because when God gives us Jesus, he is saying to us, this is what you're worth. God bless and Merry Christmas. I know we're a little bit early, but we can only say it once a year.